Welcome to Developing for the Apple iPad. This is Brian Burton, and we are starting the second lecture on developing software for the new Apple iPad. Today we're going to start on the general first project for any kind of programming language or device, and that is the standard Hello World project. Before we jump into actually doing the coding, I would like to make a note that this is part of a series of courses that are being offered at a university. Um, while we're excited, I'm excited to make these lectures publicly available. I'm not able to provide any kind of troubleshooting support. Um, this is intended as a demonstration, so I'm not able to make any kind of warranty or guarantee for your equipment. Uh, of course, there shouldn't be any problem. This is a standard Hello World type project. And all, as always, if you are interested in doing application development or looking for uh, potential people to work with you on developing an application, you might contact me at drburton at burtonsmediagroup.com and I'll see if I have any students that are available at this time to be able to help you with developing your particular project and interest. So let's go ahead and do our first project. Uh, of course the traditional first project for any computer type programming uh, project is to go ahead and do a hello world type project. So we're going to do that as our first project, a quick simple demonstration on that. So to get started in your finder you'll need to launch Xcode which is to go to your hard drive, go to the developer beta or folder that you installed your SDK to, select applications and then double click on the Xcode. That'll launch your Xcode software and we're going to start out by creating a view based application and we're going to give the project the name hello world ipad and under the classes folder then we're going to select the hello ipad nib um, I know it's spelled xib but if you've been programming with apple resources any length of time you know that that's generally pronounced nib and that will launch our interface builder for this particular project so let's go ahead and create our application then. I've gone to, I've already launched Xcode, gone to File and clicked on New Project, which brings up my new project window. We are in the iPhone OS selecting a, what type of application we're going to do. Make sure you select, at, at least at this point in time, that you're developing for an iPad, not an iPhone. So we're going to do a view-based project and select Choose and we're going to give it the title Hello World iPad. We'll spell that the way Apple is spelling that. There we go and that'll launch our window. Here's our Hello World iPad window and for this particular project there's actually very little to no coding that actually has to be done. So we're going to go to the classes window and inside the classes window you can see that we've got all of our app delegates and view controllers. Um, what we're going to be editing though is the nib file. So I'm going to come down here to the hello world iPad view controller nib file and double click on that which will launch the interface builder, the IB. Inside the IB we'll be able to go ahead and create our application and uh, the views of how that application is going to work. So I get three windows here that launched automatically. I've got my controller information which includes the file owner, the first responder, and my view. I've got my actual view as well as my attributes window and I've also got my library window open here. If you don't have your attributes or your library open you can go easily go to the tools and open the library from that way and the inspector from the tools as well. Those are commonly used things. I have that automatically open up when I'm working on a project. If you don't have it open, go ahead and open the library and the inspector. We'll be using those in just simply a few minutes. So I've got my view open and all I need to do for this particular project is drag a label onto my area. I'm going to make that a little bit bigger by clicking and dragging and there's my label area. Now right now it just simply has the text label in it. It's more or less centered to the the iPad itself and I'm going to go to the label attributes now 
which you can just simply hit uh, the option one to bring up the the inspector. Uh, of course, label two brings you up to your outlets. If you've been doing any iPhone or iPod touch uh, programming, you know that that is the common way to open up and access your inspector nice and easy. So I'm going to go here into the label and say hello world. and press enter and that has changed the text inside my label. Now of course we can change how that is aligned. We can increase the uh, font size so that it will be a little bit larger. We can adjust anything that we want to adjust inside the entire thing so that it looks nice and does everything we need to do. Last step that we need to make sure we always do for working with any kind of project in Xcode and the Interface Builder is to make sure that we save the work as we're going along. So I'm going to go up here to File, and hit Save. Of course, Option S also saves the information. And then I'll minimize it and go back to my Hello World Xcode controller. Now, believe it or not, our project is now ready to run. All I need to do is hit the Build and Run, and it will compile and bring the Xcode uh, uh, interface up and be able to show our application running in a um, simulator so that we can see how the system is going to work and run on our particular system. There's our simulator and in just a second we should see the actual project launch. There we go. Hello world, welcome to the iPad. Obviously I might want to do some adjusting uh, center this a little bit more, but that can all be done through the inspector. Um, I encourage you to play with that a little bit, become familiar with the inspector and how various things can be edited and changed inside the inspector. So that's the presentation for this first week. Next week we will be jumping in to looking at how split view works and how we can use that to modify and improve our hierarchical structure within large projects.